Tinker's house in Pisgah, Alabama for a day in the life with Callie Tinker. We did one with Olivia Vandegrift that had a real positive response. So now we want to feature this young lady. She needs no introduction, but I'll give her one anyways. This is Callie Tinker from the Pisgah Eagles. She is a four-time state champion. She is currently in the middle of one of the greatest dynasty runs in women's basketball history in the entire state of Alabama. Callie, first of all, before we get started on what you guys have done, and, and uh, I mean, we could sit here all day and make a video on just what you guys have done with Coach Ellison and, and all the great teammates you've had and the community of Pisgah, but just from your standpoint growing up here in Pisgah, what is life like outside of sports? Like when just a normal day with you here at your house? Um, there's nothing to do, literally. We don't even have a red lot. I mean, <laughs> there's literally nothing to do. We have three ponds back there. I fish a lot. Um, people just come over, hang out, you know, we shoot basketball, stuff like that. We usually go to the gym. We don't have like a hangout spot around here like most like little towns do. Like the Dollar General people hang out and stuff like that. Or but parking we go to the gym. Now, that, that works for you good because your dad's also heavily involved in training and actually has a travel team with you guys as well. Yeah. Talk about that with, with your dad and how uh, that's helped. Yeah, uh, my dad has helped me all my life. Like, he's the reason where I am, honestly. Um, he started with me at a very young age. Um, he got me an upward whenever I was like four, I think. Um, and then got me in travel ball as soon as I could start travel ball and stuff like that. And we did like, he spray painted the road like a ladder. Um, we've done ladder drills, we've done zigzag drills. And then my grandfather lives right there and he has a gravel road and he made me dribble up and down that road and stuff like that all my life. So it's kind of like Pistol Pete Maravich. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, that's why he did it. Love it. Cause my papa played against him and so my dad was. Your, your papa played against Pistol Pete? Yes. That's unbelievable. Now, you're, that's what I was about to lean into. Your papa all did the same type training probably with your dad, correct? Oh, yeah. So how, how awesome is that to be like, a, like the third generation now? Oh, it's great. Like seeing my papa's name up on the banners and then my name is awesome. In the same gym? Yes. Let's dive over into the basketball stuff a little bit because obviously it seems like it's a big, big part of your life. Right. What has it been like, if you could just put into a few sentences or describe it? I know it's going to be hard to do so, but to be on a run like you guys have been on, and, and you've already got four rings, you're playing for your fifth right. ring this year, all the county championships, all the Sand Mountain Tournament championships, what has that been like? Well, I really don't think I'd be the player I am, and like it wouldn't be what it is without key players like Annie Hughes, Chloe Womack, Molly Hurd. Like my eighth grade year, I got the privilege to play – with Annie, I mean, we didn't really get to play together, but I got to practice against her and stuff. And I was just an eighth grader. I thought, oh my God, this is awesome. I'm playing against a D1 prospect, you know? Yeah. But I got to just observe what she was doing and stuff like that. And then my ninth grade year, me and Chloe became really good friends. And um, even though we were really good friends, I really respected her. And she showed me what a leader, like how you should lead and stuff. And um, she would pull me to the side and break stuff down to me and show me and stuff. And then my ninth, tenth, and eleventh grade year, I got Chloe and Molly, and me and her meshed really well together. And I didn't really realize that until after she was gone. But um, she knew when and where to get me the ball, and I knew when and where to get her the ball. And we just got each other going. So I really don't think it would be what it is without them. They've, I've looked up to all of them. You made some, you named some really big girls, and start back. Miss Hughes was, I mean, unbelievable. Yes. And uh, I do believe, I think. They've been in the final game of her final season, I think. Molly finally broke her scoring record. Yes, the she did. Which is incredible. But when you're, when you're mentioning names like that, this, these are like names that will resonate for 100 years yes, around here. for sure. When you're being a part of that, and then now all those girls are gone, including Lila Kate and all those other girls, that, that your teammates, yes. Hope, they're all gone. Now it's kind of went over into your shoulders. How much has your role changed? Um, it's changed a lot, and Bart Hotch has helped me a lot. He's helped me change my game. And Shout I'm out so, Bart Hotch. Yes, I'm so <laughs> thankful for him, and I'm so glad God placed him in my life. And I mean, I wish I could have met him sooner, but you know, it is what it is. And right after the state championship game last year, he reached out to me, and he was like, I want to get you in the gym. I want to work with you. So all summer, I bought him to what he wanted me to do, and 
I feel like my game has changed a bunch. I mean, all people had to do was guard me at the three-point line, and I can do so much more now just because of him. That's good because you want to be a complete player. And Bart is a great guy. He played on the – those who do not know who he is, you can look up Hot Shoots on uh, Instagram, Facebook. He's also a well-renowned announcer throughout the state and was on the 1994 Mississippi State Final Four team with Eric Dampier and company. And uh, actually invited me on. We did the uh, Susan Moore and New Hope game the other day mm-hmm. together. So, great guy if you haven't seen him. I want to talk about another training aspect you do is with Brian DeMolle and Shooter's mm-hmm. Paradise. And when you go up in the gym, you know, I remember reaching out to your dad and you, and I was like, hey, we got to get Callie up here because she's a competitor. And you walk in the gym up there and you're in the gym. You got Callie Smallwood, Lanny Smallwood, Olivia Vandergriff, and then you got – the girls from Miner, you got Ace Austin, you got the Pisgah girls, with, you know. Yeah. In y'all scrimmage, it looks like a, an all-star game, like a WNBA yeah. all-star game. What are those scrimmages like, those high-level scrimmages when you're out there with all those girls surrounding you? Right. I mean, you do take it serious, but you have fun at the same time. Yeah. Like, And I feel like North, you know, where we're at wouldn't be like it is without Brian, you know, like. He's not just a trainer, but he's a great guy. Like, he's funny. He's nice, yeah. you know. Good and, uh, yeah, and it's just fun whenever you get to go and play pickup because girls don't really play pickup around here. You That's know? right. So, it's good. To, if they do yeah. play pickup, it's usually maybe not organized, and you're definitely not going to be out there with potentially 10 to 12 yeah. big winners at, at the same right. time. Yeah. So, it's fun to watch you guys. Yeah. Now, I'm talking about that to lean into this. This being your senior season, your mindset and all had to change to mm-hmm. – has to be a little bit different heading into this. How much different was it? Did you feel that pressure of now I'm now this is on my show? Yes. Which, and okay, so I, I kind of got that sense from you, but how has it transpired to how you thought it was going to transpire? Um, I didn't think I would feel this much pressure, but every time we lose or something like that, I feel like it's my fault. I feel like I've not been the leader I should be, but I mean, it is what it is, you know, like. The younger classmen, they're really good, and they're going to be really good whenever they get older, too. And just Coach, he's a really good coach, and he's going to get us where we need to be. He's one of the best to ever do it. He's crossed over the 700 mark, and I believe eight state championships. Yes. I mean, that guy's about to fill both hands up. We don't want to talk everyone's hand off. We just want to get a feel of day, what your normal day-to-day is, a little bit about your background. Most everyone knows you, and I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna leave this interview with one of the greatest compliments that I've heard um, from a girls' coach is from Ace's dad, Ricky Austin, when you hit the three pointer, which would have been Ace's eighth grade year, to send it into overtime, and you guys ultimately beat Spring Garden. He walked up to me afterwards and he said that that Tinker is just an unbelievable competitor, and I do believe he went and got you to speak to the girls or say something. He to the girls. pulled me to the side and talked to me. That's what it was. Yeah, he said that. He just he said, man, out of all the girls on the court, she was the reason he honestly felt that, that you guys beat them. And yeah. man, that was a huge compliment coming from Ricky Austin to say yes, that. Yes, it is. He's like, that is a warrior and a half over there, and I, and I love her tenaciousness and how she plays. So with that being said, we're going to shut this portion of the interview out. we got a lot more coming with this video. Right, it's now 1045-ish. We're heading to an 11 o'clock shoot-around with you guys. But up here at Pisgah, practice and shoot-arounds are not just for fun. They mean something. So, what is your mindset as you go into a practice? Yeah, um, you know, we need to always get in here and be focused because we tend to, like, not goof off, but have a little too much fun. And um, we just need to make sure we get in here and get focused and get the right shots up because this year we did more of, like, running and stuff like that and not got to put as many shots up. So, we got to make sure we get in there and get the right shots up, make sure we got our form down, stuff like that. Coach Ellison is real big into the attention to detail. We came up here, Larry Williams and I, to watch you guys practice. Yes. And he was coaching you guys to the little tiny things. Yes. How awesome is that to have a guy and a coach like that that is not going to accept mediocrity under any circumstances? Right. I'm glad he doesn't just throw us out there and he's like there. You know, I'm glad he – points out the little things because I tend to like during the game realize like the little things he's pointed out I do and it actually made a really big difference like help the helper stuff like that like that's a big one just stuff like that now let me ask you this um when you have someone like coach who has all that I don't know what the word I'm looking for here 
aura about him. The gym's named after him. All the state titles. What was your interactions with him when you first met him and started to play for him? Were you nervous? You had to be um, a little bit intimidated. Yes, I was nervous to play for him, but I was also nervous of just like being there because I knew like the talent that I was like coming up after, you know, like Annie and all of them, like I was saying earlier. But he's always been a really nice guy and he's very like, he takes your feelings into consideration and I just love him. He's really, really nice. If I know I ever needed something, I could go to him. And they've named it the Camp Stand. I mean. Yeah. They and did. I asked him about that. I said, Coach, uh, the name of your student section section up here is the Camp Stand. And people don't understand it's actually his initials. Yeah. It's his gym. Mm -hmm. Here he yeah. has some gym. So that's, that's pretty cool. good. It is. But anyways, we're going to shut this portion off. We're about to be at the school and we'll check back in with you guys. She's always just so fun to be around. Um, I didn't really get to know Callie till this year, and I'm just really privileged that I get to play with her and know who she is. The memories I've made with Callie these last couple of years and just growing up are something that I don't think I'll ever forget. And she's been a new role model to several, and me as well. And she's just a great person to be around. Uh, I can remember being in my like, fifth grade, sixth grade, watching Callie play, looking up to her. I've always been like a huge fan of Callie. And these past few years, getting to play on the same thing as her, be on the board with her, it's crazy. Me and Callie have played ball together for since we were little, and it's just I've really loved playing with her, and I've learned a lot from her. We held each other accountable, and we're a good friend. We've been good friends for a long time. Um. I mean, me and Callie have a great relationship um, in basketball and off the court. And I always have seen her as a role model and looked up to her, you know, she's a few years older than me. And it, I'm just so happy that we, that we developed the relationship that we have. Uh, when I first moved here, she was one of the first ones that stood out. Uh, she was really nice to me, and she has to be... Uh, one of the biggest leaders on the team. Uh, she carries the weight and um, she'll get on to people, but it's out of honesty and stuff, and that's what's important. She can be pretty strict sometimes, but <laughs> <laughs> it's good because, you know, she'll keep us in line. Hello, I'm Gary Ellison from Pisgah High School, the head girls basketball coach here. Uh, coach, um, 
doing this documentary on Callie today and what she's meant to this program over the years, I'm sure it's kind of immeasurable in just a few minutes, but if you could touch on that, please do so at this time. Uh, we knew she was special at an early age. Uh, everything from her genetics, knowing that her granddaddy was a legend here and played at Auburn, and uh, her dad and her aunts all was, you know, really you know, big time kids get eagles. So I identified her, even though she was tiny as a rec league player, you know, she had an instinct for, instinct for scoring. and. Uh, just kind of understood the game much earlier than most. So she definitely was on the radar early and she made her mark early. When you've seen her develop now, her role has completely changed coming into this season with the loss of Lot Lila Kate and Holcomb and, and, and uh, uh, Molly Hurd. But that's had to been difficult from a coaching standpoint, obviously losing those type of girls, but then you got to coach her a little different because you're going to need more out of her. How's that been, that transition? Uh, I think it's been harder on her uh, than it has been on me. Uh, it's frustrating for both of us sometimes because, as you said, she played with great players and a lot of heavy senior laden classes. Uh, all the way back to her first years with Chloe Womack's class, and Annie was still around, I believe. It's, it all starts throwing together after a while. <laughs> You know, her and our other singer, Jaylee, had to grow into that. And they're still growing into it. Hopefully, we're putting it together so we can peak at the right time. And, you know, I feel like she's done a great job of developing. Because we've had a, a rocky road some this year, you know, right from the beginning. And part of it was lack of uh, having a lot of seniors. And so, you know, she's done, she's had to change a lot. And, Telling her every day, she needs to change one more time, and that's to enjoy in the game again. There you go. Because it's running out. And you know, college ball is not the same as high school. It's a job. So hopefully she can get to that point where she's really enjoying this last this last month or so. No doubt. Now, Coach, as we look over here to our right, we see the keg stand. And I think it's probably, without question, one of the best names of a student section in the state of Alabama. But it actually stands for your initials, you know, Carrie Ellis and Jim. Um, how awesome is that to be honored in a, in a basketball haven like Pisgah, Alabama, with your own gym? Well, basically your name on the front of the gym here. It is an honor. Uh, when I arrived here 32 years ago, you know, I knew of Coach Cooley, who was – a legend in his in Pisgah and the state of Alabama. You know, I've got a picture of him being awarded a state championship from Barry Bryant. Uh, he was a big deal. And just imagine getting anywhere near that kind of status is you know, not possible. But uh, I am very pleased and happy that you know, they saw fit to you know, honor me that way. And, I believe Annie Hughes was the one that started calling the gym the keg, <laughs> even though grammatically <laughs> CEG is not keg, and it has nothing to do with a keg. <laughs> some people take it personal. And it's just a, it's just a good joke. Well, I've got to be good, honest with you. I think it's human. phenomenal. Uh, uh, Coach, before we close this portion of uh, Callie's interview down. Um, what would you like to say to Callie for her effort and and the things she's done for this program and helped you with your job over the years? Um, I've got to watch her grow up. And, you know, that's been kind of special to me. I've been, you know, coached them at some point. And what little she played in junior high, little she played in JV. So seeing her, you know, grow up both, you know, in stature and in her knowledge of the game or knowledge of life. It's been a really great experience. You don't often get to see all the stuff that you know, she's had to go through. She's going to finish top, probably top five scoring here. Uh, could have been possibly over 2,000 points had we not had some games go away. Uh, still might get close. Um, she's going to be far and above the most three-point 
shots made in our school history. Uh, but most of all, you know, she's gonna be missed with, you know, that, that grit. The grit is always uh, kind of been the determining factor for her. She does get down easily because she expects perfection you know, from herself, but keep telling her, you know, perfection doesn't happen. You know, enjoy some of this. Play hard, play smart, play together, and you know, enjoy basketball because it's just a short part of life. You know? I feel like she's on the right track and will be successful. No doubt. Coach, thank you so much. We're going to shut this portion down. And we're going to do another interview with you. All right, so we just finished shoot around with his in our interviews. So now we're about to go eat with a gentleman who's very big in the community, and I'm going to hand this off to Callie to explain who he is. Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to eat at Greg's. Um, Greg's been around since I think my dad was younger. Um, whenever the tornadoes hit, I forgot when. But whenever they hit, um, it his gas station was gone, and then they rebuilt it, and it was really neat how it was like set up. It was like old, and you could tell. But the new one's good too. But he's the backbone of this community. He gives so much to the community. He's just a really great, really great guy. So he had a total loss in the tornado. Which tornado yes. was it? Was it the ones that came through in 2012? Or I want to say yes. It was like the really bad ones that came through here. It had to be 2012. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, how, how long is Greg is he from here his whole entire life? I'm not sure. I want to say yes, but what's cool about it is he built the gas station where it's really long. You'll be able to see that. And the last door is his house. It's where he lives. He lives there. Yeah, he lives there. Well, He's there the every day. I mean, I love how the community like this has someone like him. It's, yes. It's so important. Have like that. Yes, he does so much. Well, shoot arounds went pretty good, don't you think? Yes, it did go good. What was Coach's mind, mindset, or what was he telling you guys heading into this very big game in Scotland? Um, he told us that they're going to play really aggressive defense, which they are. That's their game. Their game is to play defense, and we have to stop um, the King girl from driving left because whenever she gets going and she gets in the paint, then she's going to create shots for everybody else, even if she's not scoring. Yeah. Kana, I believe it's Kana King. Yeah, we got to stop her. Then you got the Snucky sisters. Yes. They got a really good team. Yes, they do. Man, I, I can't wait for this game, but we're about to eat. So we're going to shut this portion down and we will be back. Yeah, I did. We had to shoot around. Yeah, that was good. So this is the world famous Greg's. Yep, it is. Nice. <laughs> Holly definitely don't like nothing I watch. That's so we end up watching documentaries a lot. Well, you say I watch them too much. You do. Hey, you can gladly adopt me. I'll move out to the country. <laughs> I, well, it's like I told you, I like the, the boring ones, the, the boring life more than I used to. And Callie, she's 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 pretty persistent with just being around here. But they but they stay on the phones. Them phones are the worst thing. Camera stays on the game. I told you if you're around Cali, she can make friends. And all boys, they they're, they're a different breed. <laughs> we done we done had this talk right here, they're a different breed. All right, we're about to head out, Callie. You've got a little time to kill, not much, because yeah. you gotta. We gotta go to Skyline, which is what forty-five minutes from here. Mm, yeah. Something like that. So where are we headed to now? Something pretty famous place here near your house in Pisgah, yeah. Alabama. We're headed to Gorman's Bluff. Gorman's Bluff. What it? What exactly is that? Um, I mean they have weddings there and stuff like that, but it's a little neighborhood, and then you keep going through the neighborhood, and then it's um, just a bluff to look off of. That's what we're definitely with a hotel. Say. There's a hotel, and then you look off the bluff. There, there's there's a hotel and a bluff behind yes. us. Oh yeah, we're definitely in there. So, Callie, on game days like this, when you're not at school, school keeps you concentrated and focused. When you yeah. don't have school, how do you stay level-headed, not getting in too high, not coming in too low? Like, what kind of mindset do you have um, with this downtime? Yeah, I don't really do much. 
much. I just sit around and like try to get focused and think about what me and my team needs to do. And we'll text in our group chat and talk about what we have to do and what we need to do to win and stuff. But left. Left. All right. Next question. What is going in your headphones before a game? Actually, I don't listen to headphones really. It like gets me off track. I've tried and tried, but I don't listen to music. So you just stay silent. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What kind of pregame rituals do you have? Um, none really. I used to have some, but then this year I just stopped. I don't really know why. But or actually, the end of last year. Something happened and I didn't have my stuff that I needed for stay. I left it at home, and so then we won, and then I just haven't started it back. So you know. So you, you don't believe in all that voodoo? Is what you're saying? No, I mean I did it first until <laughs> I forgot my stuff, and then we won. So I was yeah, like, well, it's working. So without it, that makes sense. I think all the hard work and hours and things like that is won well, those championships for you. Anyway. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now. Three game meals? Is there one you eat? No, but I gotta drink a Dr. Pepper before a game. Here we go. I got to. I'm taking it. This is the place. Yes. yes, sir. Alright. So, when you're not playing at home and you go on the road, mm -hmm. does your mindset change? No. Same? No, home yeah. or away? Yeah, same. Never changes. I like it. Same approach every time. Yes. What is the most intimidated place you've ever played in before? Midfield. Midfield at midfield? Yes. They literally had a turntable right beside our, right beside our bench. <laughs> and would play it during timeouts, stuff like that. That is awesome. Yeah. Well, we're here, so we're going to turn the camera off and we'll ch check back in with you guys very soon. You got a Twin Lakes, and then right around that bend, you can barely see it over there, there's Scottsburg. Mm -hmm. And then at night, you can see the traffic going down the road right over there from Stevenson to Scottsburg, which is very neat. It, this is the area where this got its name. There was a, there was a girl sitting here and she fell off. Oh. And that's called Warren Flood. It was named after her. And the sunset is perfect for whatever you're trying, whatever picture you're trying to take. Oh, I bet. So when she starts, she sees Kobe. She says, Daddy, you gonna teach me how to play ball like Kobe. And she's this big. So we get out here and it was a line spray paint right here, line spray paint right here. So I'd have them go here, shift, come here, shift, go here, here, and then you have the, which Cameron still does it right here with the ladder, ladder drill. So you get here with the ladder drill and do it just like in the gym. Both feet in, both feet in, still dribbling, still dribbling, still dribbling, still dribbling, all the way down. And we do this to the, and right there's the, some of the city marks that we'd use, we'd use some of the city marks. So then I'd make them go between their legs. Have the goals, we'd do our, are classic. This is one of my favorite drills right here, folks. And this is this is where Kelly and Kobe and them kind of you kind of. This is one of the secrets in which my kids are old enough, so I don't. Yeah, I never care to help. You get right in front of the goal. I know Cameron's got lowered, but you get right here, and that's a bad shot. That's a good shot. Don't touch nothing but the net. Yeah. Behind the back. Now we're going behind the back all the way down to that road. <laughs> now we ain't going behind the back in a little piece. We're going behind the back all the way down to the to the, to the garbage can and 100 degree weather because that's we didn't do morning training. We did midday evening training. And this comes from the old school Pistol Pete videos. And this is what Pistol Pete used to do with his dribbling skills as a get on a gravel road. When you're on a gravel road, you zigzag, and when you hit these gravels, the ball's going to shift. Immediately your hand has to shift out, come back, shift out, and I'd make Callie go between her legs and behind her back, left, right, left, right. She'd go up, right-handed, come back, left-handed, go up, zigzagging, going left, right, left, right, come back. So that heel gives you your exercise like a, and, and you know how it is to run on a slant. Oh yeah. So when you get right up to the top of that curve, we come around, come, turn around, come back. And it may not seem like much, no, it does. but you got to think we're doing all that on that end, coming down the road and going through here. So you're going into probably a 40 minute workout by the time you get done shooting and the dribbling and everything. 
So when we would come back down here again, we just turn around and you see how long. Back the same way. Well, there was way same more way. gravel too. Like, it's and, very well, rain even down. you see the holes. I didn't cut her no slack. I said you don't you don't avoid nothing. You hit everything. You hit everything. So we would come back down through here and repeat. So that's what we did consistently. In and then we'd go to the gym. And Callie got her shooting because she was she did gymnastics and her legs was so big. In gymnastics, she would she would squat and have a natural shot in second grade. Cause they played on ten foot goals. That's one of the things they played on ten foot goals. They didn't start out on the upward eight eight foot. Uh, really, she played upward one year, but she did better on ten foot. She did better on ten foot because she could get the ball there with her leg ability. But I think every kid, if they're serious about basketball. They should find a place like this. Oh yeah, and dribble on. Sure, gyms and training, and, and I, that's a part of it. But this right here is it makes you account for the unaccountable. It does, and you have to put in the work. That's right. Bring it, bring it, right from the start.